Good morning. It's Ruben Lowing. I'm here in McAllen, Texas. It's Wednesday morning. It's my leadership talk for today. So I did my I did my walk and my run and my faith talk this morning. And uh, last night on the the builders call last night. The uh, Bernadette Kim, she was talking and uh, she was doing the training. And uh, a couple things, a couple things came to me as she was talking, right? When um, it, it frustrates me when I hear the calls, discipline, discipline, you got to get discipline. So I was a Navy SEAL for 10 years. Went through SEAL training hell week twice, right? I was training boxing under Roy Jones Sr. And there was never somebody telling me, you gotta get discipline, you gotta get discipline, right? I came to training every day because if I missed a day, those guys I had to spar, they were learning something a little bit more than I knew or getting a little bit better conditioning than I was that they were going to put on me when I came back to the gym. And I hated, I hated that. I, always, I needed every advantage I could get. So I didn't miss a day of training. Right. I remember <laughs> in, uh, in SEAL training. The, uh, the second time going through Hell Week. So I knew that once I got past Wednesday, they weren't going to get me out of there with a gun. So it was midnight. We just got done eating chow, mid rats. We're out in front of the chow hall waiting for the instructors. And my class officer, Bill Wilson, says, Red. Why are you doing this? I'm like, why are you doing this? So, you know, that don't mean nothing. I didn't, I had no, if I, if I would have known what to expect, there's no way I would have done this. And I was like, really, I had a euphoric high. And I had, a, I knew I had to come down and relate to him at his level. And I said, listen, I didn't make it the first time. I had to get this monkey off my back. Right. And uh, there was no way I could live with myself, right? But I had strategized on my own. No, I'm not gonna say that. I had little. I had some. I had uh, my my department chief was a a mass chief. Did like three tours in Vietnam, and uh, he was part of the, one of the plank owners of SEAL Team Six, and you know, he he. He told me some great advice. Focus on the space between the top of your head and the bottom of your feet. Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing when you're supposed to be doing it. Everything will be okay. All right? And to get through SEAL training, that strategy works. It works for a lot of things. Other things. The, uh, when I was boxing, I lost 10 of my first 12 fights. I got tired of it. And uh, I got beat up every day, every night for a year and a half. And I don't like it. And it was one day I went to the gym and I went 14 rounds with six different spar partners. And I whipped every one of them. Now the way I did it, I focused on three things. I knew where my strength was. I had a hard body shot and I knew how to find them solar plexus. I knew how to open you up to, to, to get a shot at them solar plexus. And I knew how to cut the ring off. If I wanted you in the corner, your back was gonna be in that corner the whole round, all right? And I wasn't gonna give up my piece of ground. If anybody was gonna back up, it wasn't gonna be me. Right, so those three things is what I focused on 
And that's how I won. That's how I beat everybody, right? Okay. I, when I got the SEAL teams, every time I wrote a resume, it came something carrying a gun, and I just didn't want to do that anymore. You know, and uh, I'm thinking, you know, and this is when the the government and the state and the cities were cutting back on their budgets, and law enforcement was a big thing they were cutting back on. And uh, so I knew I had, that private security was going to be, you know, what was going to fill in fill in the gap for the lack of law enforcement. So I go talk, I, do, I go interview, I send a resume and I got called in to this security company in San Diego, Mission Valley. And the, the owner was this Jewish guy, right from Israel, right? And so I told him, you know, I see, he's like, how are you gonna get, how are you gonna get clients? I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I'm sure there's a whole bunch, I'm sure there's a whole bunch, I gotta talk to them. And uh, he goes, well, how are you gonna do that? Because they're busy, they're not, they're just gonna walk in their office. I'm like, oh, it's just a phone. You gotta get good at using the phone. All right, so that's what I started focusing on. I ended up getting, I ended up getting a job as a venture capital broker, straight commission, and uh, it was hard. And uh, the, the 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 manager, you know, says, uh, "There's a phone. There's a desk. Gives me a stack of leads." I look at that phone like it was a warm cow pie. I didn't want to touch it, but I thought, you know what? They can't shoot me through the phone. And I got to smiling and dialing, right? All right, I average like 200 phone calls a day. And, you know, from there, I got into, uh, I started doing the, the educational finance group, selling parent loans for undergraduate students and Stafford student loans. You're on a dialer, man, me and this other guy. There's always top two, between two of us who can make the most phone calls, right? And uh, I was, uh, you know, my percentage of closes were very high, all right, because I knew how to qualify. I learned how to qualify really strong when I was doing venture capital. But my percentage compared to the leads that they were giving, that they were, you know, sending to me on this dialer was low. But I would, you know, I was finding the ones who wanted it. Well, then they told me that I had to learn how to how to make them want it. Like, ooh, what's up with that, right? Well, you know, help my starting off building a rapport. You know, if if uh, you know there's some they're from somewhere and you've been there, you can talk about where you've been. You know, from Chicago, been to the Museum of Science and Industry, whatever. I used to go there all the time. Doesn't matter. I've been around. I've been a lot of places. I can talk to a lot of people about things, right? And so there was one time I called this lady and she already had an educational financial advisor before it with her. And uh, she lived in Virginia Beach. I said, I used to live in Virginia Beach. And I told her the address I lived, 835 Gadwell Court. She was, that's just around the corner. And that connection, she filled out the application with me. All right. So, listening to, um, and Bernadette was just pretty much the, uh, the coordinator for training. She had everybody get on there and talk about what they got from the Trainers Academy. Now, there was a lot put out of Trainers Academy. There's so much. And they were having glitches with their, uh, with the Zoom. And so... Jerry Brown, and I like Jerry Brown. He, he's very really clear in his speech, 
very concise and uh, he, sp <laughs> he put it in overdrive. I couldn't keep notes fast enough. So I just started hitting the, hitting the button and taking screenshots. And I just kept going all the way through, you know, like 300 and some uh, screenshots. And I made a PowerPoint for myself. And I, you know what? I'm just gonna go every day. That's the first thing I'm gonna do every day. See, I've been, I've been, I'm reading the Bible, the whole Bible. I've read the whole Bible 16 times. And uh, today, or you know, this year, I've read the same chapter every day for a month in Genesis, Psalms, and Proverbs. So we're on 11, chapter 11 of all them books, and I read them every day for the month. And every day, I get something I didn't get before. And I'm thinking, you know what? I can do this for my business. All right? how am I gonna do this for my business? All right, and it's getting time that year, so I start thinking about a plan or strategy for 2021. And, uh, I'm gonna pound those slides, those uh, PowerPoint I made, every morning. First thing in the morning, after I do my, you know, my scripture reading, my prayers, my exercises, all right, and uh, pound through those PowerPoints. So I'll know compensation and the bubble chart. Pretty much, that's the emphasis that was covered. But I'll have that cold, right? And uh, and I'm just conditioning my mind. See, here's what happens when people get frustrated is because they're doing something that they don't have the subconscious programming or protocols to solve. Okay, and so. When you're, this is sweet. When you're, you talk, I mean, when somebody starts to get all excited, all right, and then they start tuning into these Zoom calls, and then it gets them, it gets them frustrated. It makes them look at things about themselves that they know are messed up and people don't like looking at that very long, right? And then, then so you know, I ain't got time for this. You know, I'm not really learning nothing, right? And, uh, and then they quit, right? What happens is they haven't learned how to get their subconscious programming subordinate to their conscious program. Their conscious programming is what gets them excited about seeing what we have. Okay. <clears throat> then their subconscious program goes, whoa, wait a minute, that's not in our protocol. Right? And tries to, it's like in Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He says, what a leader does is, uh, they start, they grab machetes, start blazing a trail through a jungle. And uh, after a while, the managers go, okay, let's see where this guy's going. And they start helping him out. They start, you know, giving him water when he's thirsty and sharpening his machete when it gets dull and wipe his brow when it gets sweaty and start creating an assembly line, cleaning up the debris behind him. And they get a nice, it gets a nice, efficient process going. And, and then the leader after a while goes, all right, everybody, wrong jungle. And the manager says, Shut up and keep moving. At least we're making progress. Okay, that's that's like your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. All right, and it takes something. It takes it takes a lot to supersede your subconscious program with your conscious mind because it's not used to it. it. Usually it's the other way around because your subconscious gets established first. You are operating in what's called theta brainwave from the last trimester in your mother's womb until you're seven years old. It's not until then does your conscious mind starts, you know, 
popping his head up and starts taking, you know, making decisions. He goes, you know, last time I did that, I got a whipping. We're not doing that anymore. Let's find something else. <laughs> All right. Let's think of something else to do, right? Well, but what's always happened is we're always so reliant on our subconscious programming. And we're in an area where we've never been. All right. That's a problem. Okay, so getting on the phone and making phone calls, that's not a problem for me because I dealt with that before. Right? How I deal with things and people, I've been working on for a long time because in the boxing ring, you know, you did it with your fists. Right? In the uh, in the SEAL training. Alright, it was like Move it, move it, move it! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Right? And that, that was how you start doing that to, to regular people, all right, and you blow them out. So, this is so ingenious the prospect bubble chart, all right. So, the uh, but the challenge is a lot of them aren't connected, all right. You know, so you got like I got 230 some. I think it's long. I think it's 270 uh, names on in the in my counter, right? And uh, I have to go through and and see who's connected to who, because there are some, right? And when I get some of one of them established, you know, when I get one going, to see where I can connect them with some others. I had one. Last night, right? Now oh, this is funny. Right, so I notice that I'm kind of a minority in, uh, in uh, I'm kind of a minority uh, with the with the team, right? <laughs> and uh, I'm like, you know what? I know this guy that they ran a Toastmasters group, and the majority of people in the Toastmasters group weren't from this country. And they weren't from Mexico either. They were from, you know, Africa. And his name was still on my phone. I called him up and he was like really glad to hear from me. And, and I told him, hey, dude, I need some help. I need some Africans. <laughs> and we laughed. We had a good laugh. Right. But, uh, you know, I said, I'm saving your future book. Um, you know, so I'll, uh, you know, I'll get him on, you know, a Tuesday or Saturday, uh, seven step, probably Tuesday, right? So he can see what I'm talking about, right? And, uh, <laughs> isn't that funny? <laughs> and, um, but, you know, this it's whatever it takes, whatever it takes, right? And if I ain't got it, I'm gonna find somebody who does, right? And, see, the thing is, what we have, everybody needs, all right? And at some point when they figure out they need it, they're gonna want it. And that's another thing Bernadette talked about last night was the, uh, the time, in, in the right time. Because everybody needs what we're offering them, all right? And it's either the products, all right, all right, to make their money, start working for them, or it's our business, all right, that can make the money for them to help them catch up and make up for lost time. Because that's what happens with the baby boomers that haven't saved, right? They, you know, they come to a certain point and uh, they'll come to the realization, you know what, they can't work forever, right? And life's going to suck if, you know, when they get older and, they can't do the things the younger people do, right? And they don't know the things that, you know, that they need to know to make business online or or on the phone or whatever, you know, so they don't, not using their physical body, right? They gotta, you know, they're gonna need something. They're, they're gonna need a resource to produce enough income to get them caught up without taking undue risk. Cause that's what happens. 
That's what happens all the time. I learned that in venture capital, right? People trying to get, you make up for lost time, and they'll, they'll, you know, that that 30 to 40 percent annual average return looks really good to them, right? But with with, you know, but you know, it's always risk versus return, right? And in in many cases, you can lose your you can lose everything. I seen that happen in real estate um, in 2008 with people. It was ugly, right? And uh, you know, and and so, you know what? You build a team, your team falls apart. You build another one. You got that, Uche? Here's another thing. You know what? You recruit somebody, and they're excited, and they get you excited. And then you sit there and you watch and wait, right, for them to produce, and they're like. They're like, what, everybody's looking at me, everybody's waiting on me to do something? I ain't going first. <laughs> right, you can't do that. You gotta keep lining them up. Right, you get that one, you gotta give him something to uh, emulate. You got to do those things that you need him to do. And you need to lead by example. Right? And you just need to go find another one. And you need to go find another one. And go find another one, you just stack them up, right? And just keep promoting. Use that campaign manager, man. Promote the workshops. Promote the uh, the events, right? And uh, you can track them. I can tell my team, man. I sent out the calendar, right? I got one guy who opened it up, and for something it was, it was doing something weird. I was like sending it out, and I'm like saw a big zero, so I sent it out like four times. So he got it like four times. He looked at it all four times. The uh, the calendar. Right, but I just I just pasted the uh, the image, all right, and then I pasted the link. I put the link in the body, all right, and uh, and sent it out using the campaign manager. The campaign campaign managers, you know, really nifty because you can tell the activity. You can tell who who looked at it, who opens it, all right, who opts out. You can tell. Right? And it kind of really is like, wow, why are they opting out? What is it? You know, so anyway. All right. Have a great Wednesday.